Hi everybody, this is Julie with Book of Hours and what you're looking at through the trees here is a view of downtown San Francisco. Um, what I wanted to do was show you the gold dome of City Hall, which is where I got married So back in November. So you can see that I'm zooming in on it, that City Hall down there. It's a, like a 15 minute walk. From my apartment just straight down the hill so I'm in my park which is across the street from um, where I live um, I live in San Francisco here's a, a little bit more of a view of um, the city from my park and I am going to turn the camera around so uh, you can face me so, or I can face you There we are. So I'm, I entitled this Manning because I wanted to talk a little bit about Chelsea Manning, uh, also known as, or once known as Bradley Manning. Um, so my husband and I were talking a little bit about, th about it this morning. Um, and I think that, you know, the latest with uh, Manning uh, doing a, a march or taking a few pictures with uh, those who would identify as the alt-right. Um, I think it's a, I don't want to say like it's a nothing burger, but uh, I definitely think that, um, I don't think it's as big a deal as uh, people might think or that mainstream media um, would have you believe. Um, and for those who don't know that you might be tuning in and going, who the heck is Chelsea Manning or Bradley Manning? Uh, Manning was uh, uh, in the military and exposed uh, some, some uh, bad actors uh, in, in the military. And it was a, a breach of, uh, you know, confidentiality and a breach of the code in the military. You know, you don't, you don't speak out against your brother and your brethren and all that stuff. So... Uh, Manning was inevitably sentenced to 35 years in prison, uh, and I believe it was the entire time was to be uh, in isolation. Um, but uh, at the end of his term, at the end of the I'm going to miss him campaign, uh, Obama uh, pardoned Manning and commuted his sentence or her sentence because she goes by Chelsea Manning now. So, um, Recently, Chelsea Manning was seen, uh, pictures of her were seen with uh, those who would consider themselves the alt-right movement. And, you know, all I have to say is that we're looking at a person who's pretty smart. Um, from, the, from childhood, this, this person, Manning, is, is a very smart individual. Uh, he would refuse to speak the words under God when the United States uh, Pledge of Allegiance was said in the classroom, a firm believer in the separation of church and in the public school or church and state, a firm be believer of the separation of, of church and state, and also um, a, an even stronger believer in freedom of speech. So I just, I have a feeling that that's what this is about. There's no agenda. There's no attempt to unite the, the, the right and the left. Uh, you know, Chelsea is running for office in uh, Maryland under Demo as a Democrat. Um, you know, I, I, you know, but I also do want to say that it's very obvious that when we look at what happened uh, a couple of days ago on Saturday with the Women's March, that you know, the corporate uh, and state-funded and state-backed uh, so-called protest or the Women's March uh, is very, uh, very much uh, leaving the Chelsea Mannings out of the conversation. We're talking uh, marginalized uh, LGBTQ community. Um, we're talking mar marginalized women who are refugees who've suffered under um, atrocious uh, circumstances as a result of U.S. interventionism throughout the globe. We're talking, you know, uh, women who've been sold into the $900 billion a year sex slave industry. You notice I didn't see any signs about that at the Women's March. I mean, I didn't go, but I happened to walk through and see, um, you know, 
<laughs> it was all just anti-Trump stuff. So none of it really addressed the state, as I mentioned in my in my podcast before. So when it comes to Chelsea Manning uh, having uh, some kind of, of rally with the alt-right, um, you also have to remember that uh, the alt-right has a very strong trans community. Now, I personally think that they're using the trans community as a tool to... to further up their their campaign or their agenda or what have you. Um, I don't think there's really any um, a serious effort to to give a stronger voice to the trans community through the alt-right movement. I, I seriously don't think that. I think that if you want to have a strong voice in a community and you don't feel like you're getting it with uh, the... Um, state-backed corporate uh, Democrat uh, movements, then you should go into, you should look into the anarchist movement. Because for a millennia, the anarchist movement has been giving any marginalized community a stronger voice. Not only just a voice, but a means with which to survive in a, in a society that continues to oppress the marginalized. So... I don't think that there's any hidden agenda to to bring the two communities stronger together. When I see Chelsea uh, hanging with the alt, alt right, I don't see I don't see that as a as an agenda. I think at this point we're looking at somebody who has been denied and rejected by the very people that claimed to to prop her up or him up at the time. Now her, um, for instance, you know. During the I'm going to miss him campaign when Barack Obama was leaving his installed position and Donald Trump was then uh, replacing him as the latest, uh, you know, tool in chief. Um, Harvard, uh, or Harvard, uh, the Ivy League institution that, you know, pretty much panders to the children of the one percent, uh, gave Chelsea Manning some you know, some sort of lackluster position as a speaker, say, whenever there's a rally. And they took that away from her. So uh, citing that, you know, they would not work with, uh, uh, they didn't actually say that, but a person resigned using her as a scapegoat saying, I refuse to be in an institution that, you know, or, or be a part of an institution that rewards, uh, you know, traitors. Because that's how a lot of people view Chelsea Manning as a traitor. Uh, for exposing the deplorable actions of the bad actors in the military. So, you know, in Baghdad, when some military bros were blowing up children and calling them fun-sized terrorists, I believe. So, so that's what Chelsea Manning did. And not only that, by that, she was also able to put WikiLeaks on the map. WikiLeaks, as we know it, would not exist if it wasn't for Chelsea Manning. So... Which is a good thing because we need transparency. We need we need to know what's going on in, in our in our government and in our society. And in my opinion, and to expand on this just a little bit more, in my opinion, the whole ideology of Chelsea Manning and what she represents uh, brought about a larger, more broader uh, conversation about you know being able to separate you know your personal morals. From your patriotic duties. So patriotism now, according to, if you would ask most Americans and they, you know, whether you stand on the right or the left side of the political spectrum, most Americans understand that, you know, unlawful interventionism at the hands of the United States military, which has insurmountable amounts of hubris and a global agenda, does not equate to the moral imperative. So patriotism doesn't necessarily mean morality. Um, and I think that conversation was, um, became a more, it, it became broader in the social consciousness when Chelsea Manning exposed, especially that video from Baghdad. So I, um, I, again, you know, hanging with the alt-right, you know, the alt-right have, have every right to go out there and espouse their, their agenda. And I have every right to criticize them. And I have every right to, to cr either criticize or support Chelsea Manning. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty Switzerland in this. I, I actually have zero opinion about her, her, uh, hanging with the alt-right the other day, you know, the, you know, I have zero opinion about it. Um, I just found it interesting and I found it very interesting that mainstream 
had an opinion about it and some of the uh, citizen journalists have an opinion about it so that's my that's my take on it is my my lack of lack of opinion is sort of my take on it um but we are talking about somebody that is very intelligent and despite having been tortured for seven years at the hands of the gestapo military and you know the pernicious obama administration um and the bush administration and sort of being used um Un- unwillingly or at least unwittingly as a political tool for each of their agendas uh, I would say that she came out uh, still pretty strong I mean she has a very sharp mind and you can't crack that mind that that is a very intelligent individual we're we're talking about so um, you know some of the stuff that I've read this morning about her and some of the stuff that JP was 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 telling me about you know her accomplishments and what she's done is is pretty amazing and I think at this point in her life after having been tortured and then rejected by Harvard after being promised this you know sort of lackluster position anyway I think at this point she's just like fuck it you know fuck it I'm not beholden to uh, to the Democratic Party nor the the Republican Party I'm just going to stick with my you know with my belief system and hold true to my own value system and if it doesn't make sense to you that's too bad so that's kind of that was that's kind of my my opinion about it so anyway I hope you have enjoyed this uh this podcast it's a little sunny out um I am going to turn this back around so you can see more of the view um I love this tree um I love this view. This is of downtown San Francisco. Let me see if I can walk a little bit more uh, over here. So, there's, these trees are amazing. All right, you guys, have a great afternoon.